Yeah, last week was a big week, so uh, we merged with 24-7 Media, which was exciting. Uh, if you think about the announcement and what it does, it puts us in some rare air. You know, we are looking at now and, and thinking that we're the world's largest programmatic and media platform. So, you know, we had an event on Friday, and just to think about how large the group is. We have over 840 employees. We have over 750 million now that we're managing in terms of uh, billing. So, exciting news. So tell me a little bit about, have you guys sort of set any bogeys or goals uh, looking ahead as to how much of sort of total spend you want to move under this, you know, the automation umbrella? Like what's, what are kind of the macro goals for your clients in moving ahead? And it goes back to what you were thinking about before, which every client has a different initiative. You know, when you look at programmatic or audience buying, um, the thought there is you can't just classify it in one bucket. You can't simply say it's all going to be branding, it's all going to be direct response. It relates back to the inventory, number one. And if we think about the content uh, and the relationships that we're working with, when you think about video and you think about sight, sound, and motion, um, a large branding initiative is going to require different needs than a DR uh, initiative. So overall spend level is not something we think about. It's more uh, thinking about the client's objectives and what their needs are and then trying to steer our, our efforts to create a one-to-one -one conversation with the client. This uh, this merger sort of makes you guys a lot more than a trading desk, right? So Thank you. So uh, <laughs> yeah. tell, tell me a little bit about that. I mean, you've got 240 engineers, you've got a tech platform, like just talk me through the, the, the sort of temples. You know, it's funny, it, our business changes so rapidly and, and I understand why people like to put companies like ours in a bucket. And if you think about trading desk, there's a reason that trading desk as a function is important because if you think about working within the DSP, it's essentially what a trading desk does. Uh, if we think about our offering, it's much more than that. And there's three other basic components that come with it. Number one is inventory. Um, Zaxxis's model is predicated on the fact that we go out and secure large chunks of inventory um, and we bring that to our advertisers leveraging the power of Group M. And Group M spends $90 billion a year. It would be silly not to leverage those relationships. Now that we have the OES relationships uh, through 24-7, we have a direct uh, contact with publishers. So I think there's 250 publishers in North America uh, that now we are, I guess, shortening the gap between publisher and advertiser. So from an inventory perspective, that's important. Make that make that real to me. Tell me what that means. You're just, you're disintermediating, you're accelerating. Sh sure, we're their ad server. So if you think about that, you can't get any closer than actually serving the ads and controlling the back end for a publisher. That being the case, there is a, you know, a direct relationship between publisher and advertiser as, as Axis is part of Group M as an agency. I think that's what a lot of publishers are looking for. You know, unfortunately, you do have a lot of jumps, and we've all seen the Lumiscape and trying to figure out how to navigate that is difficult. Um, so again, one-to-one -one relationship between I'd like to uh, work with publisher A and linking that to, to advertiser A. So I think that's important. From uh, another perspective that we don't talk about quite a bit is, is our data. Um, you know, and data really is the backbone of programmatic buying. So when you think about that, it's um, how do I have enough information or enough scale to understand who the buyers are, to understand where they are in their discovery path. We went from with this acquisition, which is, which is huge news to, from us, from dealing with, uh, I believe it's you know, 500 billion uh, impressions on an annual basis to over 2.2 trillion impressions. So just in terms of view into the marketplace, again, think about a trading desk. A trading desk wouldn't have access toward, towards inventory, nor would they have access to that data as a proprietary resource. Uh, and the last thing that I would add there is we have, just in the U.S. alone, 60 analysts. So, um, you know, you talked about cross-channel attribution. You think about attribution models, that's complex. You know, understanding all the different media types, understanding how they interact together, and understanding what the outcome or KPI we're trying to deliver from that is not easy. And I think we're just at the beginning of that. Um, I think the overall goal that you would gain from that is massive, you know, because uh, as an advertiser in an environment where digital is becoming more important, where there's more noise in the marketplace, but as we saw um, this past week, a lot of uh, advertisers' budgets are being cut, bringing efficiency to that. Not just efficiency from a price point, but efficiency in message is extremely important. I think cross-channel attributions are a way to be able to do that. Tell, but tell me about your client engagements. I mean, so you've got, you've got two sides to this, right? You're doing the media buying. Mm -hmm. So are you, are you quite often compensated based on performance or I mean what what's that emerging model look like right because it's in a state of flux right now and sure. then you've got 
the technology services, the serving fees, the SaaS business models. Like, you know, it sounds like you've got a couple different touch points with, with an actual brand, but if you focus on the media acquisition, where is that today and where's that gonna be in 24 months, say, do you think? Yeah, I think if you look at it, I think that advertising is going to continue to evolve as we've seen. We've probably taken, you know, in the past four years, as large as a jump as we've seen with programmatic buying. Um, how we work is we're an extension of our agency partners within Group M. So, you know, Mr. Powell, even though he was late this meeting, he's one of our best partners that we deal with. And we think that, you know, dealing with uh, James and his team is when there is a portion of the buy that comes up that is uh, audience uh, driven by nature, we want to be able to provide the tools back to uh, both James and his team to give them a programmatic landscape that includes display, that includes video, that includes emerging markets. Uh, all those things that are tools that we want to be able to bring back to them. And again, it goes back to what the KPI is. In some instances, like um, what Christina has built out with our program, uh, with our uh, Zaxxas Premium Video, it's brand driven, you know, and we have some of the top tier content providers that we're able to engage with and do um, tremendous opportunities in terms of what those those are. Others can be other relationships that we have in terms of um, driving towards metric, uh, and we'll compensate it off of that as well. Great. So again, it depends on the advertiser. Thank you.